Hello class, welcome to lesson 8-3, which is all about quadratic equations. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to factor trinomial, trinomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c, and you should be able to solve equations of that same for, form but set equal to zero. So let's talk about our first example when you have a b and c term that are both positive. So we have positive b and positive c. Okay. So one trick... Um, to do these problems, first remember factoring each polynomial means that we are going to write it so that way we have our d's plus a number, okay? We have to know what we have to add each time. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned that if you make an x and you take your b term and put it on the bottom, put a little plus sign next to it, and then if you take your c term and put it on top, put a little multiplication sign next to it, we are looking for two numbers that when you add them together, two numbers that when you add them together, you get 11, hence the little plus sign, and when you multiply them together, you get 24. Okay, so some numbers that add to 11. 10 and 1. 10 times 1, that doesn't give me 24. That doesn't work. Um, let's see, 9 plus 2. That gives me 11, but 9 times 2 only gives me 18. Then, you know, we have 8 plus 3. So 8 plus 3 gives me 11. 8 times 3 gives me 24. So I know I'm going to use 8 and 3. So I take my variable... I split it up like I did, one in each set of parentheses, and then I put in my numbers. So if I take those and I did eight or d plus eight times d plus three, if I FOIL that, I get d squared plus three d plus eight d plus twenty four. So when I simplify that and combine like terms, I get back to my original. So that is my foiling is the method I'm going to use to check my answers. So when you take your test, you should know how well you do because you're able to check every answer. Okay. So let's try another one. If we look, we have... Our trinomial written a little bit backwards, so I'm going to rewrite it in the standard form t squared plus 10t plus 9. Okay, so I know I'm going to have a t. I'm going to have another t. I need it to add to 10 and multiply to 9. So some numbers that add to 10. 5 plus 5, that doesn't multiply to 9. We have um, 7 plus 3, 6 plus 4, but none of those multiply to 9. But we do have 9 times 1 gives me 9. 9 plus 1 gives me 10. So I know that those numbers work, so I'm going to say plus 9 plus 1. And I am done once I hit that step. Okay? So why don't you guys go ahead and try to solve one on your own. Good luck. Hopefully you ended up with x plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 1. Okay, so now we're going to try that same process, but this time our b term is going to be negative and our c term is going to be positive. Okay. So again, I'm going to rewrite m squared minus 22m plus 21. I highly recommend you rewrite it first, okay? And then I'm looking to add up to a negative 22 and multiply to a positive 21. So add up to a negative 22, multiply to a negative 21. When they're usually one apart, you're usually going to have a 1 somewhere. And so if we do negative 21 times a negative 1, that's how we get back to a positive 21. A negative 21 plus a negative 1 gives me that negative 22. So I 
take my variable m, and I say m minus 21 times m minus 1. Again, if I FOIL that out, I get m squared minus m minus 21m plus 21. And when I combine these center terms, I get minus 22m. So I see I ended up back at the same trinomial that I started with. So I know that this answer has to be correct. Okay, let's try. Again, this one's already written in standard form. I want it to add up to a negative 11. I want it to multiply to 28. So add up to negative 11, multiply to 28. Since we are adding to a negative number and multiplying to a positive, I know I'm going to have two negatives. And I think my factors of 28 include 4 and 7, 14 and 2. But I know 4 and 7, when added together, get me to 11. So negative 4 plus negative 7 gives me negative 11. Negative 4 times negative 7 gives me a positive 28. So I take my variable, w, and say w minus 4 times w minus 7. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and try one of these on your own. Hopefully you ended up with the quantity of x minus 2 times the quantity of x minus 8. If you have questions, be sure to ask for some help. All right, example 3. Now our b term is positive, but our c term is negative. Okay, so we want to add to a positive 13 and multiply to 48, negative 48. So thinking, what are some numbers that get me to 48? I know 2 and 24 gets me to 48, but 2 and 24 will never get me to this 13 I need. So 2 goes into 48, 3 goes into 48, 3 times 16. So 3 and 16. And if I add a negative 3 to a positive 16, I'd get to that 13. And if I do negative 3 times a positive 16, I get my negative 48 that I need. So I know that those two numbers are the ones I am looking for. So then I take it and I say y minus 3 times y plus 16 because my 16 is positive. Okay? So y minus 3 times the quantity of y plus 16. Let's look at part b. We're looking to add to a negative 2 and multiply to a negative 24. So some numbers that multiply to negative 24. 2 times 12. And 2 and 12, I know, are 2 apart. So if I do a negative 12 times a positive 2, I would end up at a negative 24. And negative 12 plus 2 brings me to a negative 10. So that's not going to work. So that was worth a try, but we got to keep going. And I also just realized I said negative 12 and 2 are 2 apart. Clearly, it is early this morning, and I am very confused. So sorry about that, but we're all human. We make mistakes. Okay, so we ruled out 12 and 2. And then 3 and 8, those aren't two apart, so I'm going to ignore those. 4 and 6, now those are two apart. So if we do a negative 6 times a positive 4, we end up at negative 24. If we do negative 6 plus 4, we end up at that negative 2. So there we go. I know I need a negative 6 and a positive 4. Alright, so that means that I take my r, and I say r minus 6 times r plus 4. Okay? Does it matter if I would have written it the other way? r plus 4 times r minus 6? No, you'd end up with the same thing. So if your final answer is just backwards from mine, like this, then you're okay. okay? You'd end up with the same answer. 
go ahead and try this one on your own. Hopefully you said x plus 5 times the quantity of x minus 1 was your answer. If not, that's okay. Try another one. Hopefully for this one, you ended up with x minus 8 times the quantity of x plus 3. If you have any questions about those, please be sure to reach out for some help. All right, now we are going to practice solving equations. So this is going to be that same process that we've been doing. We're just going to add one final step on at the end. Okay, so let's rewrite this so that way it's equal to zero. It's very important that these equal zero. So I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. So that way I have a zero on one side. Now what we want to do is we want to factor our trinomial and set it equal to zero. Okay, So let's figure out what adds to a negative 3 and multiplies to a negative 70. So I start thinking, what are some numbers? Okay, if I do 2, 2 and 35, 3 doesn't go into 70, 4 doesn't go into 75, goes into 70, but it doesn't get me my negative 3. 6 doesn't go into 70, 7 goes into 70, 7 times 10, and 7 and 10 are only 3 apart, so I'm going to choose those two numbers. If I do negative 10 times positive 7, I get negative 70. If I do negative 10 plus 7, I end up at that negative 3. If I do negative 10 times a positive 7, I will get to the answer I want. Now when you're doing this, if you would have said a positive 7, or a positive 10 times a negative 7, you would have gotten that negative 70, but when you did 10 plus a negative 7, you would have ended up at a positive 3. If that is the case, where you end up with an addition problem where you have the opposite sign, whether it's positive or negative, chances are you just have to switch which number is negative, okay? So let's continue on. And we have z minus 10 times z plus 7 equals 0. Now just like yesterday, we have two quantities that we need to set equal to 0. So we're going to say z minus 10 equals 0. So if we turn this into a z equals, we have z equals 10. So if we plug 10 in there, we have 10 minus 10. This whole thing becomes 0 times, and then 10 plus 7, 17. 0 times 17 gives me 0, so I like that. This is one answer. And then we have z plus 7 equals 0. So if I move the 7 over, I have z equals negative 7. If I plug negative 7 in, I have negative 7 minus 10, which gives me negative 17. And then I have negative 7 plus 7, which gives me 0. So when I multiply those, I end up at 0. So I know my answers are correct. So I put a box around it, and I call it good. All right, let's try another one. This one does not have the equal sign because it is just a typo, but let's just write it in. Okay, so we're saying it's equal to zero. So let's figure out how to write this one. We want it to add to three, multiply to negative 18. So if I think about that, I know six times three gives me 18. And so if I do a positive six times a negative three, positive six times a negative three, I end up at negative 18. Positive 6 plus negative 3 gives me that positive 3. So I'm going to do x plus 6 times x minus 3 equals 0. Then I take it and I say x plus 6 equals 0, or x equals negative 6 is one answer. If I plug 6 in, I have, or negative 6, I have negative 6 plus 6 gives me 0. Negative 6 minus 3 gives me a negative 9. 0 times negative 9 equals 0. Then I have x minus 3 equals 0. If I add 3 to both sides, I end up with x plus 3. And when I plug that in, I end up with 0 times a positive 9, which brings me back to 0. 
So I know those two must be my answers. Now the way that you'll see answers written in the book is they will write them in the brackets like that, okay? Um, that is best practice, okay? I'm not going to dock you if you don't this chapter, but just know that that is a good habit to establish. Okay, go ahead and solve this one on your own. Hopefully you said five, negative four was the answer. If you have questions about that, please be sure to reach out for some help. And let's look at our last example for this section. We're talking about the height of a parallelogram is 18 centimeters less than its base. If the area is 175 square centimeters, what is the height? So we have a parallelogram, and we are talking about the height is 18 centimeters less than its base. So we're going to say our base is B, because we don't know what that is. Our height is 18 less than our base, so I'm going to represent that with D minus 18. And the area is 175. Now the equation for the area of a parallelogram is just base times height, because it's just a tilted re rectangle. Okay, so we know our area is 175 equals our base times our height. Now we want to solve this, so that way we can find out what our height is. The way we do that is I'm going to distribute this, and then I want to set it equal to 0. So I have b squared minus 18b minus 175. So now I'm looking for numbers that add up to a negative 18 and multiply to a negative 175. And if I keep going through the numbers, I end up negative 25 and a positive 7. Get me those numbers. So if I write my equation, b minus 25 and b plus 7, we know that we can't have a negative distance, so we know that one of our heights has to be 25, or one of our measurements is 25 centimeters, and one of our measurements is 7 centimeters. Now, which measurement should be less? Our height should be less, so we know that our height is going to be that 7 centimeters, because it's smaller than the 25 centimeters. And you can check it. One, seven, um, not 175. If you do 25 times 7, you know, you end up at 175. So 75, or 7 centimeters is the height, and 25 centimeters is the base. All right, why don't you go ahead and try this last problem on your own Hopefully you ended up with 6 by 8. If you have any questions at all, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm more than happy to help you. Have a fantastic day.